Go for it. So thanks students for joining us for this pathway area. We'll be covering the electromagnetics area and also the, the circuits area in just a bit, um, but we will get started. So prepare to be electromagnetized by uh, Dr. Konstantin Balanus. God. <laughs> well, thank you very much for the kind introduction. I, I can see, I can hear some laughs in the background. Okay, repeating, path, ECE pathways, electromagnetics area, the foundation of electrical engineering, obviously. And I'm the presenter. And for those of you play golf, this is me at the tee box of number seven at Pebble Beach, signature hole of Pebble Beach Golf Course in 2013. I haven't been back there since. Okay, what's electromagnetics? Electromagnetics is the study of charges, either at rest or in motion. The one charges at rest, we call that statics. And we cover that in triple E 241 here. Everybody in electrical engineering has to take that one. The one in motion, we call it dynamics, time bearing, that's covered in triple E 341. Now, electromagnetics, the basis of electromagnetics are um, for, uh, based on four equations, very basic equation we call a Maxwell's equation. And I'll show you Maxwell's in a few minutes. And uh, uh, those Maxwell's equation are in vector form. The very compact and special cases of Maxwell's equations, circuit theory. When you analyze circuits, especially lumped elements used in Kirchhoff laws, those are special cases of Maxwell's equation. Again, I will demonstrate that in a few minutes. Also, those of you who may take advanced courses in EM, like Triple E five forty one, geometrical optics, physical optics are special cases of um, Maxwell's equation. Who was Maxwell? James Clerk Maxwell lived in the 1800s. Uh, unfortunately, very short period, lifespan of about 48 years. This is, he was from Scotland and here's a statue of him in Scotland. And on the bottom there, it's hard to see, it says, James Clerk Maxwell. Well, one of my students that got one uh, got his PhD at ASU, working now for Apple, visited Scotland and went to Maxwell's hometown and took a picture of his house. And this is the house of Maxwell. This is my student, and one of the bricks over here are Maxwell's equations in differential form. Now, let me show you those, what exactly that brick is. Here it is. Maxwell's equation in differential form. Standing in the house of Maxwell. Okay, so that's one set of Maxwell's equation in differential form, but we also have them in integral form. And those are here are four of Maxwell's equation in integral form. The first one is has all the terms, it's, it's complete. However, when we do vector, when we do circuit analysis, especially those using lumped element um, comp components like resistors, uh, capacitors, inductors. This is representative of the loop equations that we do. However, in low frequencies, this last term, which I've shown here that uh, cover is small and we do not include that. That term is not included in typical circuit analysis low frequency circuit of lump elements. The next one is the node equations. 
in circuit theory. All the terms. The last one, again, is a term that for low frequency circuit analysis and using lump elements is very small. This is the one and is not included. So, however, when we do full wave analysis using Maxwell's equation, all those terms are included using, for example, nowadays with um, software developed, software includes all the terms. So those are Maxwell's equation. One, the first one, in integral form, the first one is again representative of the loop equations in circuit analysis. The second one is the node uh, analysis of circuit theory. Why electromagnetics? I cannot emphasize is the basis of electrical engineering. Uh, number two, fundamental challenging problems in many, in many areas of electrical engineering. Wireless communication, and we'll show you some examples. Packaging of mobile units, such as cell phones. Stealth technology, and I have been involved in this for decades. Uh, using complex and practical problems. Using, what I, I said a few minutes ago, full wave techniques. Full wave techniques include all the terms of Maxwell's equation that I was showing you just a minute ago. You treat, we treat the problems as distributive devices, not as lumped elements. Modeling and simulate devices using full wave solvers. Those are software and many of them around um, available. and others. Here is some example of those devices, um, some older generation, and of course, today's generation, you can see some of the ones, uh, you see the one all, all the way to the right, the walkie-talkie, you can see the antenna, the exterior to the device, um, on the upper part, the first two on the left, walkie-talkie, uh, uh, walk, it's one of the, um, cell phone where the antenna elements, uh, the, uh, the antennas were outside the device. One is the StarTac, the first one on the left, that's the Motorola, very popular during the uh, 90s, for example. I had one personally. And then, of course, they took the, because of breakage and because of looks, they moved the antenna element inside the device, they embed it. As you can see on the lower, three of them. Looks better. Uh, you don't have to be worried about the antenna break or whatever. So all those have been designed based on using, let's say, uh, software and Maxwell's equation in complete form. Well study. Again, analyze, model, design, antennas, RF, microwave circuits, fiber optics, electronic packaging, EMR, electromagnetic interference, EMC, electromagnetic compatibility. Here is a base station. Here is a microwave circuit uh, laptop. Cell phone. Stealth type of uh, um, airframe, airplane, F-117, for example. However, to be successful in courses related to electromagnetics, we recommend people that have solid foundation of the following mathematics, physics, circuits, and we'll talk about in a few minutes which courses in particular, because electromagnetics are very 
mathematically intensive. As we showed Maxwell's equation in integral form, differential form. In other words, you have to understand vector analysis, need vector analysis. So because electrical engineers are, again, consider them engineers, not technicians. So those three, mathematics, physics, circuits, very, very important fundamentals for to be successful in and do well in electromagnetic courses and in a, in a career in electromagnetics. So what are the prerequisite courses? One that all electrical engineers have to take is Triple E 241, Fundamentals of Electromagnetics. Triple um, E 202, Circuits 1, Physics 131, and Physics 132, which is the lab associated with Physics 131, the lecture. Those are prerequisites for all electrical engineers, no matter what area of electrical engineering you're going to follow, what electives you're going to take. So the 241, the gateway course in electromagnetics, covers primarily static and also towards the end time varying vector fields. And I try to emphasize vector, okay. Boundary value problems, dielectric and magnetic materials. Dielectric, the ones you have variable permittivity. Uh, magnetic, the one you have a relative, I mean, uh, different permeability. That's how you define the materials or you represent the materials. Dielectric, through permittivity, magnetic through the permeability. Yeah. Permittivity, the epsilon, the permea permeability, the mu. Maxwell's equation, boundary condition, the differential equation. Uh, when you try to solve differential equation, depending on the order of the differential equation, you have a number of unknowns. In order to um, determine the unknowns, you have to apply boundary conditions like you do in mathematics when you deal with differential equation. A prerequisite, again, I repeat here, triple E 202, physics 131 and the associate lab 132. What are the courses related to electromagnetics undergraduate? Triple E 341 engineering electromagnetics. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, that's taught fall and spring and even summertime sometimes, especially nowadays with online classes. Many of these classes are taught um, fall, spring, maybe even summertime. You, ha you have to check to see which one, and depends on enrollment, of course. This is primarily devoted to time varying electromagnetic fields, dynamic or time varying as well. Um, deals with the fields, waves in homogeneous and stratified medium. Homogeneous are the one that have the same permittivity or permeability, for example. Stratified is where the permittivity, the, the, you can represent it in layers. And each layer has different um, Permittivity, permeability, or, perm or, or combination of the two of them. Transmission lines, waveguides, cavity, resonators, radiation, electromagnetic radiation, antennas. Of course, we'll show you some of the courses. This course has a lecture, but also has a lab that goes with it. Now, this course here. It's required for those that will pursue pathway in electromagnetics. In other words, they're going to take um, elective courses, and I'll show you some of those courses. Uh, 
in uh, electromagnetic, like antennas, microwaves, and so forth. And of course, the prerequisite to this one is two, two, uh, 241 that everybody has, has to take in electrical engineering. So again, for emphasis, Triple E 341 is prerequisite to take EM electives like EM antennas, microwave, optics, and so forth. What are some of the electives that we've been talking about? Antenna course, antennas for wireless communications. We cover different fundamentals, parameters of radiation. Elements, basic elements, uh, dipoles, linear elements, loop antennas, or combination of those elements put together, we call those arrays, smart antennas, um, microstrip elements, very popular starting in 1970s. Uh, also include measurements. We have a facility, I'll show you that towards the end of the presentation. You know, very, very popular course and very, especially in wireless communication. Antennas are the eyes and ears of a communication system. A human, if you don't have a good eyes, good, cannot hear well, cannot be a person, cannot be efficient. Same thing in, in a wireless communication system. If you don't have a good, good uh, antennas to transmit and receive information, the, um, system cannot operate efficiently. Another one, very bad, uh, the, the wireless, the, the guts of our communication system inside, microwaves, Triple E 445, again taught uh, spring, fall, maybe even summertime sometimes. You have to check nowadays with online classes, those courses, all courses, are more available. 448, fiber optics, another very popular uh, uh, course for senior elective for All those right here, again, repeating, you need to have tech 341. And by the way, 341 is a very fundamental course for wireless communication. I recommend, I personally recommend that all electrical engineers take 341. You learn many things there that you will need in communications, in fiber optics, no matter which area of electrical engineering, even in solid state, 341, uh, because we cover transmission lines, people in power area, talking about lines, transmission lines, to transport energy from one place to another one. Okay. 341, recommended. Graduate courses, we have a slew of them. You can see here. And we and we offer them on a frequent basis, uh, especially like 541, uh, 543, uh, the, the, uh, which is the, the first one is 541 is a graduate, first graduate level course in electromagnetics. Um, and again, radar, uh, microwave circuits. And we even have a 600 level courses. They're taught, now they're not taught as often as some of the other ones, but we have taught, that's why we have them, because we teach them. Graduate school, master's level, somewhat specialized, applications oriented, PhD, more, uh, specialized in a particular area, research and development, R&D, uh, required for positions in a university, careers, academia, need a PhD, industry. Um, I'm sorry, let me go back over here. Industry, bachelor's, master's, PhD. You can see some of the, what you, usually what you do in each one of those things in teaching research applications, job opportunities, all kinds of companies, especially in the Phoenix area. Many of them have facilities here in the, in the Valley, industry, government. And I worked for one of them, NASA, back in the 60s. 
faculty, Professor Eberly, you've probably seen them. Uh, myself, I'm a professor emeritus. I retired a couple of years ago, but I'm still involved. Uh, professor Imani, Professor Palais is also uh, Professor Emeritus, Professor Pan. Some of you may have been exposed to some of this faculty. And of course, Professor Tricopoulos. Books, um, we have a number of people authored by faculty, myself included. Uh, this is Antenna Theory. Uh, this was the third edition. This is the fourth edition. Uh, the fourth edition is in color. This is the graduate level book that we use for graduate level electromagnetics, small antennas, the you know, book I authored. Uh, I edited a book or a handbook on modern antennas. This is the book on fiber optics, authored by Professor Palais. This is a book on wavelets, authored by Professor Pan. And last but not least, this is just came out uh, just about three, four days ago. This is the third edition of the Advanced Engineering Electromagnetics book that we use, for example, for 541, 641, and so forth. Uh, facility, we have a, what we call the chamber, the anechoic chamber, EMAC, electromagnetic anechoic chamber, one of the top two such facilities in a university environment. We built it in 19, middle 1980s, 85, became operational 85, 86. Okay. Unique. Not many universities have such a facility, not only such a facility of that size. So, last, first some uh, viewpoints. Why electrical engineering? Why electromagnetics? Why NASA? This is speaking of myself, it was there in 1960s, 64 to 76 years. I was a faculty member at West Virginia University, 70 to 83, 13 years. And lastly, at ASU, 37 and a half years. But besides being an electrical engineer, working for NASA, teaching at the university, I also mess around with golf. Not a good golfer, but I enjoy. Now, if you want to know something about all those, uh, the whys, electro engineering, electromagnetics, golf, and so forth, you can go to YouTube. I've been uh, interviewed yeah, in March of uh, last year. Um, it appeared on the YouTube on July the 19th, 2023, the Legends of Electromagnetics, Professor Constantine Balan. You can go there and if you have a hard time sleeping, this will do it. We'll take care of it. So with that, I want to thank you for the opportunity to make this presentation. And I'll be most happy to answer any question as time permits. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Blanas. Students, if you have questions for um, Dr. Blanas, really about his career, his history, anything like that, feel free to throw them into the chat and we can facilitate those. But uh, we like to... to Poke fun at Dr. Blondis, but he is very accomplished, and we're we're super grateful that he comes to these and and uh and you're all going to look at his book eventually, which is exciting. So uh, we do have a question here. It says okay. um, mm -hmm. this uh, Angel Torres is asking, does three thirty does three forty one generally cover the second half of the field of field and wave electromagnetic second edition by Chang? So do you cover that stuff in the course? Or do we, uh, excellent think. question. Yes, we, we yes, that's exactly right. Um, so, uh, yeah, so 341 said, is the second half of David Chang's book. We started probably 1980s and we had it until the last couple of years. However, the book by Chang uh, is out of print. So, uh, uh, switch into a, a new book, uh, another book, I should say, um, but Ulabi, I believe is going to be the book that they're going to be using in for Triple E 341, and not only for Triple E 341, but also for 241. I think the next question, it says, this was the text used in 241. It seems to stop halfway 
through the Czech's book, just the first half of Shank's book, David Shank's book was used primarily for 241. And the second half, it was used for uh, 341. By the way, that's not only Chang's book. Most all of the undergraduate EM books do exactly the same thing. Half of it primarily for uh, three, uh, statics or 241. And the second half for dynamics or time varying fields for 341. So we're trying to use one book for both of those courses. Thank you for that. Um, and a funny note about that, whenever a faculty leaves uh, their office, um, Cheryl, who's on the line here, we often go searching around for one of those books. <laughs> we True, go rating for them. Three copies of Chang in my office right now. <laughs> oh, you better keep them because you're not gonna be, you're not gonna be able to find any in the future, so. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, then, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> take, it, take, it, take it with you. <laughs> do we have All any right. other any questions? Other question? for, yeah, it looks like we do here. This is, a, Angel's asking another question. Do you foresee any issues with 5G implementation? He works in the electric utility area and there are lots of conversations about setting the antennas on supply voltage uh, plus 69 structures. Do you do you uh what do you have any thoughts about that? Well, I don't know that much about it, but you know, five G is uh, the future for a while at least. And I don't know. Um, this is an application in the power area. Uh, it looks like uh, conversation setting up antennas to, on supply voltages. So um, I would rather not, you know, um, uh, provide any comment because I don't know that much about it. Yeah, uh, Angel, maybe come by the 5G power. 5G is the future of, you know, com uh, wireless communication for a while. Yeah, yeah, Angel, I would recommend coming by the power pathway. That would be a great question to ask. Yes, that would be a great question for it. Exactly, yes. Yeah, he's saying line workers, have, line workers have to climb up to the next to the antennas. They're unsure of whether the power output will be an issue. And yeah, that this would be a really cool question for the power area exactly. folks. And, and this these kinds of questions and these kinds of specialties are... Uh, useful to understand why, you know, we always talk about EE being a very broad major, and it is because when you want to get into these specialties, um, it, it really can go in multiple directions. So, yeah, come by the power uh, group. I'm not sure who's going to be presenting that day, but I, I, that would be a great question for that group. Yeah, that will, that will give you a better question, that better answer, I should say. Yeah, somebody from the power area, yes. All right, any other? Uh, thank you. Uh, it's uh, oh, and it just you're getting a big thank you from uh, from Angel um, for your feedback. It's a pleasure to see your presentation, and, and he's congratulating on your recently published Wiley textbook, which is now has Bolanus's name in the title, not only in the author. Correct? It's Bolanus's electromagnetics or something like that. Uh, yes. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I think it's actually a cook. I think it's actually a cookbook. It's just his favorite muffin <laughs> recipes. I, I guess you can't see me. Yeah, I have a copy of it but right here. <laughs> I just got it about four days ago. Uh, <laughs> yes, he has my, I think again, uh, this is, to my knowledge, okay, the first engineering book, science book that has the author's name on the title. Okay. Now, the only, the, when, uh, when the publisher made this suggestion to put my name on the title, I kind of resisted, honestly. And I said that on the, if you read the preface of the new edition, and the example that told me, Gray's Anatomy, the example that, they, no, really, that's what, they, to convince me, Gray's Anatomy, Gray, G-R-A-Y, is the author and has his name on the title. So, yes, my name is on the title. Well, I read the book and I can tell you it was a fantastic cookbook and I can make fantastic macaroni and cheese after reading it. So thank you for the oh, boy, you, change. You know it changed my life. You know how to stab somebody, aren't you? After all this nice comments, at the end of them, you throw my stab. That's okay. I can take it. Uh, remember, I'm, I'm, I'm from a distance. I'm not in the office. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't hurt as much. 
<laughs> well, well, thanks so much. Uh, thanks, students, for uh, dealing with uh, our banter here. But uh, we appreciate we. I'm joking, but we do appreciate you coming to this. It means a of lot course. to the students, and it, oh, it's nice. awesome. All um, all humor is good. It's part of life. <laughs> we will exactly. move on to the circuits area, and unfortunately, our circuits faculty um, on at last minute couldn't join us. I'm going to cover parts of that presentation and. Uh, and uh, and if Blana, Dr. Blanis is still here, he can correct anything I try well, to say. Well, one, one minute, did you, did you say you're going to cover the uh, the lecture on uh, the seminar on circuits? Well, I'm going to I'm going to review some of the slides and I uh, obviously well, don't. Why don't we continue with electromagnetics? The rest of it, <laughs> in, <laughs> instead of you presenting the circuits. It's not a bad idea. I think the students might be expecting some of the content, so I probably should at least review the faculty in that Maybe group. I'll do a better job if I, if I do it. I think you would, too. Uh, <laughs> are, you, well, are you willing to talk on some of these slides? Well, I don't have the slides, but I can do I can do it without even the slides. Here, let me put it up here. So this is... Um, um, Go do it. Thank you. Yeah, so sorry, students, about that. Um, we had a last-minute cancellation, but... The circuits area, um, and this is kind of an older presentation, but it, we should be able to get some of the most important information out of it. And if Dr. Balanz is willing to correct some of the areas that I talk about, or if he wants to take over, that's awesome too. Um, but just just a, a brief preface from my knowledge area, because I'm not an engineer. Um, circuits is the largest, uh, most kind of, I guess the most popular uh, academic area in EE at the moment. Um, it's probably the most, uh, students are most aware of it because of the circuits are kind of what you guys are used to. Um, but we have a lot of specializations within circuits. And as Dr. Balamas talked about earlier in his presentation, there's a lot of crossover. So um, to be a good EMAG faculty or, or researcher, you need to know about circuits and vice versa, that sort of thing. Um, let let so me inject something at this point. I, I was undergraduate back in 1960s. Circuits and electromagnetics were required courses going back in the 60s. Both, you, you did not have an option. You had to take courses in circuits, two courses in electromagnetics. Now I'm talking back in 1960s. Yes, th th that's a true statement here. What this slide shows you that circuits is very popular, uh, covers many areas of almost all areas of electrical engineering. And by the way, circuits, special cases. Remember what one of my slides? Maxwell's equation in integral form. Loop equations, node equations are based on two of Maxwell's equations. Okay, now you can continue now. Yeah, so these are some of our uh, areas that we have faculty in that are doing specialization in. So we have an analog uh, circuits area, digital circuits, um, BLSI, the, the point number two there, um, a lot of our international graduate students come here from all over the world to study with us, and often they're sponsored for permanent visas, and many, many, many of them seem to be being hired in this VLSI area that's very hot, um, so that the, that skill that they can gain from our courses often leads to them getting uh, work and visas, which is very exciting. Um, uh, the MEMS area, emerging devices and circuits, and then this RF and microwave systems and integrated circuits. So there's a, a lot going on. And also make note that uh, the, the semiconductor microelectronics, all that kind of stuff right now is very hot, particularly in Phoenix with um, the expansion of Intel's plants and TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor, uh, creating a fabrication plant up in the, the North Valley. It's a big deal. Um, so here are some of our faculty, uh, slightly out of, uh, out of uh, this one's a couple of years old, so I, I kind of dug this one up, um, but we do have faculty in all the areas that we mentioned. Um, so if you're curious, and then if you want to know more about this, the universe, our school's website has um, bios on all of our faculty. So if you're someone now, maybe you're starting to take 334 and a little bit after and you want to learn more. Uh, feel free to reach out to any faculty and ask them about undergraduate um, research experiences or more, but these are the general areas. Um, most of the circuits faculty, if you're on campus, and I know we have a lot of online students here, but they're in the ISTB4 building, which is a really exciting building. Um, online students, if you come to campus and you, uh, uh, especially at convocation, if you guys come to that, 
make sure to stop by ISTV4. It's got a, it's like a museum in there. They have wonderful things to look around. And Tempe campus students, if you, if you haven't gone in there and looked around the first, second and third floors, because the, the exhibits there are pretty cool. So check them out. Um, these are some of our applications. Um, so I wanna jump ahead to the curriculum just so you can see what it looks like. So mainly after you get through the uh, uh, 202, you'll jump into circuits two and then you'll move on. Um, uh, if you wanna do more circuits, you'll take some, uh, you could take circuits uh, uh, 335. And then after doing that, you'll branch off if you choose in one of the two areas, whether it's digital or analog. Um, 333 is a course where the, you learn uh, coding like Verilog and stuff like that. That's very popular. Um, so these are the kinds of courses you take when you're uh, choosing the circuits pathway as an undergraduate. At the bottom of the, so the bottom half are graduate courses. So if you decide to stick with us for a graduate program or your four plus one, these are um, some of the topics that you'll learn about. I won't spend much time on that. Um, here are some faculty members, uh, and uh, Dr. Belanis, you can maybe uh, help me a little bit with um, what this is, because this the imaging and stuff might have some relation to what what the EMAG folks do. But Dr. Uh, and Dr. Chirkopoulos is an EMAG air person, but he does research into circuits in the terahertz area. Do you have any comments on what he does, Dr. Belanis? Yeah, it's high frequency terahertz is way up in you know, above microwaves. So, but, but you you correct. Uh, he, he's pri primarily uh, an EM uh, pr uh, faculty member, uh, and but w works in the terahertz for, for, for different applications. You know, imaging for medical security, you know, non-destructive inspection, and so forth. Yeah. So again, there's a lot of crossover between our areas. Oh, de and... definitely. All all faculty members, as you can see, they, they, they more than just one area. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, and so um, and the same kind of goes for the, Dr. Z, as we call him, uh, Dr. Sayed Z. And yes, he does a lot mm -hmm. of uh, um, sensing and communication type stuff, which obviously has a lot to do with uh, uh, electromagnetism. So it's all these two areas are have a lot of overlap. Um, some of the VLSI research areas we have are listed here. Um, I won't speak too much on them. Uh, is a, but but again, and then the VLSI areas I talked about, we do have a lot of people hired in there, but um, at the bottom here, you'll see uh, where many of our students are hired. So some of the largest companies in the world doing the most important work in this area, our students are working at. So um, uh, uh, you've got a track record to, to, to get hired by these folks if you do well in this area. Um, Neuromorphic computing, we have uh, folks working on that area. Uh, I believe that's um, Professor Fan does that and some others. Uh, unfortunately, I can't give you too many details on that, but I wanna do share another. Uh, Professor Kitchen is, is a, a very um, well-respected faculty member in here. Um, she's interested in a, um, RF transceivers and power management. So another example of crossover is the, you know, circuits have, um, uh, you know, a lot of power consumption and there's a lot of interest in um, using, you know, optimizing how power gets in and out of these things and what it does. Um, so we have a power area, of course, but a lot of our power area folks are also interested in circuits because um, uh, that's a big component of what it is. Um, Dr. Kitchen has a large research group that's doing really exciting stuff, um, just so you can know a little bit more about our group. Um, Dr. Jennifer Blaine Christian is, does really interesting things in the biomedical area. So a point on her, um, her research is, uh, you know, a lot of students at ASU come to, um, uh, they want to work in biomedical fields. And so sometimes they'll study biomedical engineering specifically. But I like to talk about her work because um, EEs can definitely be very leaders in the biomedical area. And in fact, um, sometimes they need someone with deep uh, electrical engineering knowledge to make the stuff work. Um, she's uh, being, she has, Dr. Blaine Christian has a lot of um, exciting research projects in the biomedical area. 
this is kind of more on some of her stuff. Yeah, so there's a lot of interesting problems she, her and researchers like her need to solve. So if you want to have circuits working on the inside of somebody's body or in an organ or in the brain or in a heart, you need to be able to do this by passing power um, at a very small way in a way that doesn't make a person sick and that um, you don't need to take it in and out all the time. So it's um, really exciting problems that, that our faculty work on in that area. Um, I'm going to skip ahead. There's a lot of slides on this one. Now, um, and I know Dr. Blanis has a lot of experience with students leaving and going to work. I know he's worked in industry himself. Um, this is a slightly out of date. It's been updated a little bit, but um, these are kind of where our uh, students find work in the Valley. So this is a lot of Alley, uh, Valley stuff, but um, these are some of the largest um, I know Dr. Bolanos has experience in the aerospace industry. You'll see some of those folks on there. Um, uh, my One of my roles is to help the graduate students with their skills verifications um, when they go on to get work. And I see lots of Raytheon, lots of Intel, um, uh, mic microchip, all that kind of stuff. Are there other companies on this list that we should add, Dr. Bolanos? Any big companies that we're missing, you think? Well, thank you, because I was, I was going to jump in. Thank you. you. You read my mind. Yes. You know, many of us came here um, going back to 1980s. I came in 83. At that time, um, local uh, tech, high tech industry demanded that ASU have a good engineering school. They introduced what they call engineering excellence program. Uh, myself, uh, Dr. Ferry, Dr. Schroeder, we came in here as a full professors because the uh, commitment ASU made to upgrade engineering because the demand from local industry. At that time, the Phoenix metro area was the second highest high tech area in the country. The other one was up in the Silicon Valley at that time. ASU at that time, and of course has been, uh, has jumped up Considerably, the ASU engineering and University of California and Santa Barbara were consider, considered the top two up and coming, remember, top two up and coming engineering schools in the country because of the commitment ASU made in engineering. Local industry headed at that time by Motorola. Motorola was the largest employer of engineers here. They had 19,000 people in Arizona, most of them right here in the valley. But Motorola kind of fell off the top a little bit with the cell phone because they pursued the analog option of the cell phone instead of the digital. Okay, what is now General Dynamics in Scottsdale used to be the government electronics group of Motorola. Most of our students in classes, all of my classes taught engineering classes, especially electrical engineering, were coming from Motorola. We had a class in antennas, 120 students. Most of them, Motorola. Again, I'm making a point for Motorola. Okay. So yes, I think, and then of course, <clears throat> we have all of the faculty in electrical engineering have students working for these companies. We have to. Uh, Intel, Raytheon is primarily, I think, in Tucson, but Honeywell, General Dynamics, as you, you show there, that used to be the Motorola Government Electronics Group, or they changed the name to Government Electronics Division. Okay, G, 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 I, D. That's where they changed the name. Boeing, what it used to be, McDonald Douglas, the building there about four miles from my house, the Apache. I went to the opening ceremonies with the, the, concerning the Apache here. IBM locally, Freescale it was part of Motorola. It was split for Motorola. Orbital Science, it was very small, one, one building. If you go down Price Road, there are many buildings expanded, but it used to be Motorola. I, I mean, excuse me, Orbital Science. And now they all other companies. Yes, this is very hot area 
in technology, the, the Phoenix metro area, many companies, and there are many more companies that I'm not aware of, very sm smaller companies and so forth. Yeah, it, keeps, it goes on and on. Lo locally, we have yes, Medtronic. Thank you. I'm we sorry. Have students. Yeah, we have yes, students yes. like TI all over the place. And so, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. But I, I, you also brought up an interesting point about um, ASU and what we've done. I always like to remind students about what ASU is and where it is. So I know I'm from the Chicago area, and there's a university every every couple of miles, it feels like. But ASU it was kind of the, the demand when um, it sounds like when Professor Bellanis was hired was that we need to do more for the valley. ASU needs to do more for the valley to draw in industry. And we still do that. So, um, you know, TSM, TSMC coming to town has impact on ASU. They want us to do more. And um, I know we have a lot of online students on with us today. And, um, you know, when we went online with our programs, because we wanted to expand beyond Arizona, even where we think we're uh, trying to solve the problem of educating engineers um, to beyond Arizona now. We know the world needs more and uh, we're interested in doing it. So thanks for bringing that up, but especially during your time when you started on, it was a big deal to have brought you folks on, new faculty in engineering, pretty much made the engineering school what it is today. Let, one more comment that we talked about the online. Because of the lack of internet, you know, 1980s, we, we, ASU has been teaching what the, we call today online since 1980s. We used to call them TV classes because we, they, they were broadcast because of the lack of the internet only locally. We had 16 stations using a microwave link. We used to call them TV classes. Motorola had three locations. Intel had two of them. Um, uh, um, uh, let's say Honeywell. Um, um, what it used to be, uh, what, what is now um, the uh, aerospace companies, you know, throughout the, the, the valley. So we used to teach, ASU was one of the first ones to teach online classes. We used to call them TV classes. When I came in 83, there were radio uh, on. I had five classes. Yeah, imagine back in the day, so the online students, instead of using RP now for your exams, You'd be mailing your exams back and forth with the post office. That's kind of how it worked, right? No, no, we, we had an office. ASU had the office, especially in engineering, where they used to do the handling, all the logistics of sending out, the yeah, receiving and sending out uh, homework, test assignments, and so forth. It worked very well. Never had a problem. Never. Yeah. So, but we've been in the business for a long time. So, yeah, that's a great reminder. Thanks. We're not just, we didn't just... Uh, Kind of throw this thing together we've been doing distance education for a while um this is the one's a little out of date but again the the um compensation by industry this this is quite out of date now so i don't want to put too much uh, uh focus on it but those are large numbers um those large numbers are probably median compensation so people have been in the field for a while um but they should show you that if you're uh wondering about quality of life after graduating with one of our degrees and where you'll go. Um, um, people in our areas do, in this area, do quite well as they do for pretty much all EE majors. Um, uh, and, the, you know, this is the place, this is the kind of degree that you can take you all over the country or all over the world if you wanted to. Um, of course, this compensation by location shifts. And I would say it's changed even more since this was published a few years back. Um, for example, Arizona compensation has gone up, but so has the cost of living. So there's a whole economics game behind all that. But, um, but anyway, that, that was uh, that it for that. So sorry that our circuits faculty wouldn't be here, but uh, good for you that you got more Bellana, Dr. Bellanis out of this deal. So, um, and uh, you know, he's, he, he was able to cover for us a little bit, <laughs> but do you guys have more questions, particularly about circuits or anything like that? Let me make one more comment before, you know, talk about electrical engineering, very diversified. If you look at the professional society of IEEE, Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, used to be called IRE. Can you hear me still? Yeah. Okay, thank you. In 1963, you changed the name from IRE, Institute of Radio Engineers, to IEEE Institute of Electro and Electronics Engineers, because there used to be before two electrical engineering uh, societies, they merged into one, IEEE. IEEE today, to show you the diversification, has 39 
specialties, 39 journals and in, in, uh, in associated magazines. Each professional society has its own, its own journal or transaction, 39. So you get a degree in electrical engineering, you can find a job almost everywhere in a different area. You talked about biomedical engineering, you talk about power, you talk about communication, uh, you talk about electromagnetics. Yeah, they, they, they companies, yeah, locally, for example. So the most diversified degree in engineering, electrical engineering, biomedical. You know, can you know, like electrical engineers doing work in biomedical, biomedical image, imaging, and so forth? You talk about uh, the kitchen, you know, all those professors, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that we now have. And by the way, electrical engineering, when I came, there were 25 faculty members. Now we have what, 60? Oh, more 60, than that. I think we're up to plus. 75. Yeah, I think yeah, we're in the 70s. Okay. To show you the expansion, the commitment made by ASU to, to engineering, especially electrical engineering. Yeah, it's a, it, our students do great stuff. It is one of the tougher degrees out there. So when you hit some of these courses, particularly 241, don't look away. Just uh, study harder and stick with it. Our, our students do great. You can find a job almost anywhere, anywhere in the country, no matter how small the area is, no matter how big the area is, you'll find companies that hire electrical engineers. Okay, let's see if we can answer any questions. Yeah, it looks like uh, I don't have any questions yet, but if you have, um, uh, Jim V, thanks for putting the faculty by uh, research area down. So. Students in the chat, um, uh, our advisor, our graduate advisor, Jim Vanderplug, put in a link that shows our faculty by their research area. Um, really, that should be something that you should, if you haven't read that, just so slowly read through each of them, mm -hmm. even if it's not a research area like. It's just, you know, it's great to know, you know, you're, you're paying for access to these folks when you pick tuition. So you, it's just useful to know who they are and what they've done, you know, get your, get your imagination going, what you could do with it. And he also put in um, a link to our graduate programs. So uh, graduate students who earn master's degrees have a, a significant salary differential. They do better financially. Same with PhD. Um, uh, Philip's got a question here. If you're interested in doing VLSI, what are good undergraduate take uh, um, undergraduate courses to take in addition to, to circuits classes? Um, so the circuits path, uh, um, obviously, take as many of those as you possible, possibly can do. But if you're looking at VLSI stands for very large scale integration, um, correct? And I think, I don't know, maybe, maybe um, what else would make sense in there, Dr. Blanas? What else do they do? Like they have to know a little bit about optics, right? To understand how to, how to do well, that. Well, uh, and... you know, communications in the communications area, the, the VLSI people, communication. Even if, again, the, the, if you treat it, the devices as distributive instead of a lumped elements, I think electromagnetics. I mean, I, I had to put them, I know I'm from the electromagnetics area. If you treated them, the circuit as a distributive circuit instead of some lumped elements, as you go higher, and, and you have to do that as you go in and higher and higher frequencies because you have to take into account, you know what I mean, all these the details concerning the circuit, for example, then the electromagnet, we talked about Maxwell's equation, there are a lot of um, uh, software being developed, uh, commercial software, you know, that you can use, you know, to do some of this more uh, advanced uh, designs to take yeah, into that's... account all the, all the effects. Yeah, and I would say um, if you come to one of our other pathways, you can ask a similar question because if you went to the, because um, we I talked briefly about it, even though I'm not an expert, but someone might in the power area, there's there's power applications and they're not always just talking about power plants and nuclear power and, you know, generation. Sometimes they're talking about power in into these tiny devices. Um, the, the, and thank, thank you, Dr. Bonner, for mentioning the signal communications and signal processing era, area, because that's a big deal. So um, right now, uh, another hot area is um, 
you know, uh, uh, data science. So, which it has a lot to do with collecting signals and data. Um, and that could have something to do with this area too. Again, I'm no expert, I'm not pretending to be, I just kind of know what these faculty do and what they're curious about. Uh, so thanks, Philip, for putting in a, a content question there. Any others? Looks like Jim is reminding students about, um, yeah, if you're not poking around the career engineering career center site that he put in chat, look in there regularly, even if you're not looking for an internship or a job now, um, be the kind of person who's always looking at what people are posting so you can prepare for when you're all ready to go. Yeah, a recommendation that they attend to all the uh, uh, pathways, you know what I mean? This way you get a better understanding what each area is, what the, uh, it's offered at ASU. Uh, for example, what courses they should take to be ready in whether they should, they should go to graduate school and I highly recommend that they do. Uh, you can do it either full time or you can do it on a part time basis. You know, the special nowadays with the online availability of, of the classes from around the world, for example, of course, we, we have uh, ASU covers almost all of them. You can take classes online from a distance. Great. All right, well, well, thanks everybody. We're about done on time anyway, but um, yeah, and we do have a bunch of online students who joined us today. And I, I, I special thanks to you guys for joining us for a live event while you're online. Uh, sorry, our circuit faculty couldn't be here, but um, you get, like I said, Dr. Blanc is more fun and interesting anyway. So <laughs> thanks for being here. Do I, do I get paid twice? Do I get paid twice? Or I just want to clear this thing out here before we sign off. Uh, yeah, I will talk to uh, Dr. Phillips about that and ask him. Um, uh, and, you know, I'll add it to my fee too. The compensation, in other words, instead of it being, uh, we don't take checks, we would rather take cash because checks balance. Yeah, yeah, I know you'd like to keep that from the IRS. So I'll make yeah, sure that correct. That, that's another, yeah, you, you know about that, obviously. You must have experience. <laughs> <laughs> Thank right, you well, very much. Enjoy it. Enjoy it very much. Yeah, well, thanks. Thanks again, students. Thanks for your, your yeah, interest have in a joining us. Have a great semester.